The best kinds of archaeological discoveries are the ones that challenge the experts. They're the ones that force us to reconsider all the things we thought we knew about the past and prompt us to think again. Finds like that don't turn up very often, but when they do, they're always worth paying attention to. Here in this video, you're going to see a series of incredible archaeological discoveries, some of which are as mysterious today as they were on the day they were found. There are almost too many incredible archaeological ruins in Peru to count, but we'll reserve special mention for the tombs of Saipan in Lambayeque. It's not just the fact that the tomb is in astonishingly unspoiled condition that makes it noteworthy, but also the story of its discovery. It was found in 1987 by a team of criminal tomb raiders, but they fell out so badly about how their treasure discovery would be split between them that the police were called and the robbers were arrested before they even had a chance to enter the tomb. Instead, archaeologist Walter Alva was summoned to excavate the tomb, and he found the discovery of a lifetime waiting for him. At the tomb gates, he found the skeletal remains of a large man sitting in a chair with his feet cut off. Later examinations suggested that this was a security guard positioned to guard the tomb's occupant in the afterlife. His feet had been removed to stop him from deserting his post. Beyond the gates lay the final resting place of the Lord of Saipan, buried 1,700 years ago and surrounded by gold and jewelry worth millions of dollars. Only the discovery of Tutankhamun topped this as an archaeological find in the 20th century. 300 years ago, an ancient Scottish village was buried under sand on the Shetland Islands, north of the Scottish mainland. When archaeologists came to take a closer look at the remains of the old settlement in 2020, they discovered that a lone individual had apparently returned to the village in the years after its burial, and seemingly lived alone there in a house dug straight into the sand. The settlement, known as Brew, was abandoned during the 1690s as sand deposits encroached upon the 20 or so residents' homes. By the time the archaeologists arrived, the sand had buried their former homes six feet deep. Found among the ruins were pottery fragments, clay pipes, small amounts of coinage, and elephant bones. The elephant bones weren't native to the island, so they might have been the personal possessions of the Sinclair family, who once owned Brew. The identity of the person who returned will never be known, but they survived by digging a tunnel into the sand to reach their former home and creating a new living space on top of it. Life would have been extremely difficult for them because of the isolation and the elements, so we can only assume that they must have really loved the place. Ancient statues turn up quite regularly in Egypt, and most of them are fairly similar in design. However, the statues that turned up in mid-2020 in the ruins of the port town of Berenice are anything but. These sculptures, which are around 2,000 years old, show clear signs of being influenced by both Asian and Nubian cultures, suggesting that significant cultural exchange was already happening during the time of the Classical Age. The port town, built under the leadership of Ptolemy II, would have served as a trading center for merchants from Arabia, India, and Africa's east coast. It remained in use until the 6th century, when it appears to have become silted up. The design of the heads on the unique sculptures appears to have been influenced by Asian Gandhara, which was a focal point for Buddhism at the time, but the material they're made from is locally sourced. Another sculpture is an effigy of Saibumakar, a Nubian deity who was worshipped in what's now Sudan. Was Berenice the world's first multicultural society? Based on these discoveries, the answer to that question might be yes. When the Spanish came to conquer vast swaths of South America during the 16th century, the Chachapoya were already gone. The Inca had defeated them after a long and spirited resistance, and most of the traces of their culture were lost with them. Almost nothing about them at all was known until 1928, when a seven-foot-tall statue fell off the side of a cliff in the Utcubamba Valley. The statue split open when it landed, revealing a sarcophagus that still contained a carefully wrapped mummy. That prompted an archaeological scramble, 
revealing the presence of a further seven similar statues hidden in the side of the cliff. They're now known as Purunmaku and are thought to be the traditional burial custom of the Chachapoya. This habit of burying their dead in high places ties in with their nickname, the Warriors of the Clouds. It's thought that most Purunmaku had already been found and destroyed by looters by the time of that lucky discovery in 1928, but a few more examples have been found in the Peruvian mountains since then. As burial traditions go, this has to be counted as one of the world's most unique. Our next artifact has had something of an undignified recent history, considering its provenance. For the majority of the past decade, it's been used as a horse mounting block, but it's recently been identified as a 2,000-year-old marble Roman relic. Despite the elaborate decorative pattern on the stone, the owner of the English countryside home in Wiltshire it was found in didn't think anything of it until a friend suggested letting an archaeologist have a look at it. She was stunned to be told that not only was it an ancient artifact, but that it had traveled a long way to help her mount her horse. The stone was carved in either Greece or Asia Minor. As well as having two laurels etched into the stone, the slab has an inscription that reads, The people and young men honor Demetrios, son of Metrodoros, son of Lucios. Its meaning is unknown. The property on which it was found was built during the 1960s, and it's thought that the slab might have been there the whole time. Where it came from before then is a total mystery. For obvious reasons, the Second World War was a dangerous time to try to move anything across the seas. People still had to attempt to do so, though, and so there are a lot of shipwrecks at the bottom of Europe's oceans with a lot of valuable cargo on board. The hunt for those shipwrecks is a lifetime's work for a lot of people, and the most recent major discovery was made in late 2020. The British press has described this find as Churchill's Sunken Treasure. It's a treasure haul of silver worth more than $200 million. The ship that carried it, the SS Garsopa, was sunk by a German U-boat close to Galway, Ireland in February 1941. The wreck of the Garsopa was found in 2011, but its cargo had spilled out across the ocean floor, and so it took several more years to track down the silver. Odyssey Marine, the company responsible for the discovery, says that it's a world record in terms of the depth that the silver has been identified and recovered from. As there were more than 7,000 tons of silver on board, though, it's unlikely that this discovery represents the whole haul. There could be more out there. A group of farmers on Mexico's Gulf Coast decided to start 2021 by digging out their citrus grove. In the act of doing so, they came across a six-foot-tall statue of a woman that might be an ancient depiction of a god. Experts from the country's National Institute of Anthropology and History were sent to the location and say that it's the only statue of its type that's ever been found in the Huasteca area. The statue is six feet tall and is mostly undamaged from its years spent underground. The details on its surface are clear enough to see that she wears a headpiece and has numerous accessories that denote her as someone of status, but they're not sure whether she's supposed to be a god or a powerful leader. She was probably carved at some point during the 15th century, and while the discovery was made close to El Tajin, a Spanish ruin, there are some suggestions that the statue might be Aztec. Women in this part of the world were much better respected in the time directly before the Spanish conquest than they were immediately afterward, so the idea of a female Aztec leader isn't out of the question. How much can you tell about a civilization from just one tomb? Well, if the tomb in question is this 1400 Chinese Xi Dynasty tomb, the answer to that question might be quite a lot. The tomb was found in Anyang in China's Henan province in April 2020, but had lain undisturbed since it was created during the days of the Su Dynasty, which began in the year 581. The most striking discovery within the tomb's walls is a white marble coffin bed, marked with symbols that refer to both Buddhism and Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism was popular in the Persia of the time, 
but Persia wasn't thought to have become a significant influence on Chinese culture until at least another century after this tomb was made. Fortunately for historians, the tomb was so well preserved that its full epigraph is still legible. Thanks to that, we know the tomb was made for a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Kui Jing. The style of calligraphy used in the epigraph is unusual and might have been specific to this century, or perhaps even this decade. The combination of the written history of the tomb's occupants and the rich variety of grave goods will help inform studies into the Su Dynasty era for some time. Here's a very big question that's never been answered properly. Who invented the alphabet? As of January 2021, experts have a new and promising theory. They think it was invented by illiterate Canaanite miners who'd become bored of trying to learn Egyptian hieroglyphs 4,000 years ago. According to the research of Israeli Egyptologist Orly Goldwasser and her team, there's evidence that shows the hieroglyph for ox, which was pronounced Aleph, became the letter A. This is borne out by the similarity between the shape of the letter and the shape of the original hieroglyph. She says B came from Bet, which was the pronunciation of the Egyptian hieroglyph for house. Examples of a rudimentary form of the current alphabet can be found on a temple in Sinai, and Goldwasser believes they should be considered prototypes of the letters we use today. The letters form the Sinaitic script, which would go on to influence the Phoenician script, which eventually influenced Latin and Greek. If it's true, it means that the alphabet wasn't started by aristocrats or academics, but by ordinary people who thought there was a better means of written communication than drawing elaborate symbols. When a workshop, warehouse, or factory closes down today, there's every chance that unfinished goods will be left behind after the gates are locked for the last time. That's apparently always been the case, even if the production facility we're talking about is thousands of years old. Archaeologists recently discovered the remains of an ancient workshop at Gebel el Silsia in Egypt, and within it, the remains of a collection of unfinished carvings, including what appears to be a sphinx with the head of a ram, carved from sandstone. To the best of their knowledge, the workshop was opened 3,000 years ago, during the reign of Amenhotep III, grandfather to Tutankhamun. When archaeologists started digging, only the head of the Sphinx was visible. By the time they'd done, they'd uncovered a statue 15 feet long and 9 feet tall. An unfinished sculpture of a coiled cobra was discovered nearby and might once have been intended to function as the Sphinx's crown. The workshop was almost certainly buried under soil because of Roman activity in the area but the reason why it was abandoned when there was clearly so much work going on will probably never be known. The cultural importance of Tenay in Greece has been known about for centuries. Goods from Tenay have been illegally smuggled out of the country for decades and wound up on the walls of some of the world's most famous galleries. The Koros of Tenay is the most famous example, which is currently in a museum in Germany but was never formally allowed to leave Greece. You'll also find stolen Tinian goods in a few American museums. The location of the city itself, though, remained a mystery and had almost started to be thought of as a myth when archaeologist Elena Korka finally found it in the southern Peloponnese area of the country in November 2018. Korka and her team have identified a housing settlement, burial sites, coins, and jewelry that all indicate a large population was based in the area around 1,700 years ago. Based on these beautiful coins and the stylish design of the Hellenistic graves, it was an extremely affluent area. That supports the idea of it being Tania, and so the long search of hundreds of archaeologists over countless generations might finally be at an end. More recently than that, a stunning temple dedicated to the goddess Aphrodite was discovered in Turkey in January 2021. The 2,500-year-old structure was made easier to locate thanks to a helpful inscription found at the site, which reads, This is the sacred area. Belief in and worship of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, 
was so prevalent in the region at the time that some historians say it had almost become a cult. If that's true, then this was where the cult came to go about their business. There isn't much left of the temple today save for the inscription and the broken remains of a statue of a woman, found alongside a battered terracotta bust of a female head. But there's enough left for experts to be sure of what they're looking at. The nearby city of Aphrodisias was named in honor of the goddess, but this temple was found under the Orla Semsi Peninsula. That suggests that the city limits of Aphrodisias extended much further than archaeologists once assumed, or that the worship of Aphrodite was observed beyond those city limits. The reasons for the temple's destruction are unknown, but it didn't get this badly damaged by accident. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.